It's a cold dawn and the company of young British soldiers is under attack. This is just a training exercise and it's happening in the safety of Northern England. But soon these soldiers will be in Afghanistan in what many say will be the fiercest fighting season so far. The soldiers are members of the reserve force known as the Territorial Army, or the TA. They're plumbers, students, bakers, volunteers drawn from everyday life and paid to do part-time military training. It's called bombing because the bombs took in the air. Former Navy officer Chris Hall helps run one of the TA companies. Once you start the training, you can be, while you're training for Afghanistan, being delivering letters or repairing toilets, uh, and then at the weekends training to go to war, and going back and delivering letters again, etc., uh, until eventually um, the TA hand those soldiers over to the regulars. They go to war, quite literally, and then when they return, after their time off, they go back to delivering letters and repairing toilets again. Originally I joined the TA because I was on a college course, uh, I was on a bit of a minuscule grant and it was to get extra extra money basically. Uh, I saw an advert in the local paper which had three guys jumping out of a Westland Wessex carrying SLRs and I thought it looked quite exciting. I got to carry an SLR but it was some years later before I got to jump out of a Westland Wessex. You get a monthly uh, wage based on how many MTDs, man train days that you've completed during the month. Friendship as well, you know, the, you meet people who you stay mates with for, you know, for years. Today, the Fifth Fusiliers are getting ready to mark St George's Day, the patron saint of England and of the unit itself. It might look a little quaint, but there's a deadly serious side. Well, the, the image of the TA ten years ago was that the regulars thought they were just a drinking club. They were just a group of people who put combats on and had socials. But things have changed dramatically since Iraq, well, since Bosnia, the, the start was Bosnia, then Kosovo, Iraq, Afghanistan. The TA have been on a constant war tempo ever since. Um, it's changed dramatically to a very switched on operational fighting force. Right, the left, quick, march, left, right, left, right, left, right, left. In theory, the ter Territorial Army is a separate army to provide numbers. It was raised with the idea of, as in the First World War. Professor Michael Clark studies the demands on Britain's armed forces and says the TA plays a critically important role. These people have been deployed in ones and twos um, in order to make up shortages. That was the case in the medical services some time ago. And those ones and twos have now become about 30% of our full force deployment across any given operation. 40, 50, 51, 52, 53, 54, 55. TA members get about $50 for each day they turn up for training and more for fighting overseas. In the depressed northeast, that can make all the difference to a struggling family like new father Darren Longstaff. So yeah, it's a year, it's a money salary, it's about £27,000 for me. That's yeah. you come out with 27000 from the deployment. That's not including the five and a half grand, but yeah. it's a lot of money. Yeah. So I think everyone, everyone's in the same boat at here. It's a financial incentive. Well, I've got a little daughter, actually, she's called Holly. Holly? Yeah. yeah. Don't, want to, don't want to leave her, like, but you've got to look at the, the career side of things, haven't you, really? And, we have more in life. Yeah. But Darren knows that earning that money carries risk and that soon he'll be in a real life war zone. What the TA used to do is that they used to backfill, so that they used to take supporting roles to release regulars to go to the front, as it were, to, to take on the combat roles. And that was fine, but increasingly what's needed is not infantry or frontline troops, what's needed are the specialists, and the specialists tend to be in the TA. So a lot of TA officers and, and uh, rankers have found themselves on the front line in any case, sometimes in the first deployment. Once they join the TA... Veteran ex-regular Graham Smith is this region's uh, welfare officer for like the TA. The expectation is that they will have to go on an operational tour, so they don't really have a choice. Mm. Uh, that, that is the expectation, and that's what they're signing up for. So when, once the training is, uh, has been completed, the expectation is that we will turn around and say, there's an operational tour coming up, and we, we are you? expecting you to serve on that operational tour 
and here is how we're going to do it through that process of mobilisation. But not everyone gets through unscathed, as I'm about to find out. The commitment far exceeds what we pay them. Uh, so it's not Graham Smith pay. is taking me to meet the wife of a TA soldier who was recently sent to Afghanistan and who then called her from the front with a message she'll never forget. Well, um, I've been shot, just, just like that. So obviously I was, I just couldn't believe what I'd heard. What, what went through your mind when he said, I've been shot? It was just a complete blank. I didn't know, I couldn't speak. I didn't know how I felt really at first. And then he started to explain that he was shot in the leg and he was going to be absolutely fine. And I think after a couple of seconds, it started to sink in and I got obviously really, really upset. But I, again, didn't want to show him on the phone that I was really upset. Uh, you, you know, once you're committed to soldiering, you become incredibly selfish. Uh, Danny's partner has now rejoined the TA. But the shock of his injury and the fact that he's got a new baby girl made him wary of another overseas mission. He, he said, right, that's it. You know, I've, I've had a shock. You know, I wasn't expecting that. And I don't know if every soldier's got that in their head, but I don't think he ever once thought anything like that was going to happen. And I think when it did and he got home, he thought, right, that's it, I can't do that again. I can't risk, you know, everything to go and do that again. It's a freezing dawn, and Z Company is on the streets for a gruelling two-day march. An Northumberland Piper tries to lift the spirits, but it's little defence against the chill northeast winds. How, how many miles have we done so far? 20. 20. Five hours. It's four miles an hour. Yeah, so it's. So we've been. And, and that's, incli that's where it's, it's faster because we've had loads of breaks in it. Exercises like this are a way for officers like Bosnia veteran John Hunter to assess these men to see if they're fit for the battlefield. You know, if we knew there was an individual who was wanting to deploy, but really, we knew hand on heart, wasn't quite fit enough, we'd have that discussion with them and, you know, we'd advise them not to go ahead and to do a bit more fizz first uh, before they went down. Because if they become a casualty um, due to poor fitness, then it's those that are left around who have to, who have to deal with that casualty. Um, so it, it does have a serious impact on, on what happens out there. With their involvement in Iraq, Afghanistan and now Libya, Britain's armed forces have already been at war longer than during World War II, increasing pressure on the TA to deliver men. It's almost a certainty now you know, that, that everyone will deploy at some time. Uh, and, and probably you know, a couple of times within a three to five year time span. I've been the TA for 26 years now. I've been sent on a lot of courses. You know, the army's invested in me and I think you know, it's only fair they get a ret they get a return on their investment, um, and it's it's something I think every every soldier wants to do to uh, to deploy on ops for real. My children are used to it; they're used to me being away. And as for my ex-wife, she's probably not bothered either way. The march is over for the day, and it's time to inspect damaged feet. Is it like incredibly painful? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, if that ruptures, then what you've got is a huge chance for infection. Wait, it's just qualities as well, skills like discipline, um, like the commitment to what I put into things now. Like, I would just, before I joined with TA, like, I would give up on things if they weren't going my way. Uh, I wouldn't be too happy about it, but no, I, like, I'll keep on trying and like, do me 100% best. These two TA soldiers, Fusiliers Damien Rowell and Ross Davison, are working one of their last shifts at a paintball company. But soon they'll be firing real bullets in Afghanistan. We're both going as frontline soldiers, we've been total riflemen for the squads and that. So you're going to be on the front line? Yeah. And rifleman means you're really going to be out there among it? Uh, well, yeah, I'm a bit nervous, but uh, and I'm happy I'm going. But I think that when it gets close to the actual time to point out there, and then uh, I will feel it. I will. It is shocking that it is like, shocking that it has come quick, but it's something I want to do in life. How do you feel about this now? I'm a bit nervous, but it's something I've always wanted to do.
face from our country. It's going to need a lot more, we'll, we'll not be out with a lot more fighting out there. With some other lad and dead, there'll be someone new appointed with a Taliban leader and he'll just want to make his name. So it's going to get worse. 48-year-old veteran Corporal Moore is also deploying. You've probably done your thing. I mean, why don't you do it? Somebody's going to look after the youngins. <laughs> so do you see it? Well, yeah, I mean, it's, uh, it's, it's, the jo it's the job I do. I'm, I've trained for it. It's pointless training for it if you're not going to use it. It's the summer season, the fighting season. How do you feel about going out there at the moment? It's, it's like everything else. It's, there's, there's danger in everything you do. In, in the civilian life, I drive a truck. And how many people get killed on the roads? It's, you know, there's risk involved in everything you do. Your friend's coming for your birthday. Darren's deployment to Afghanistan is nearly here. Weeks of intensive training with regular soldiers will start within days. I think I'd rather him do a job that he's happy and good at doing than being stuck in a dead end job, really. His partner was also in the TA. It's where they met and she understands his desire to go. But leaving her and their baby girl, Holly, isn't easy. My will sorted, life insurance, it's all done. The only thing that we do now. But does it concern you? It's a day-to-day it's a -day job. You go up there, get by, hit by a bus. It's just as more... You don't think of that way, it's a job. It's half treated as a job and that's it. Not as... If it happens, it happens, it doesn't, it doesn't. So no, we get upset about it, it really isn't. You go up get by, hit by a bus, really. Uh, there was uh, someone killed there on Monday with a type bomb. It's the biggest threat out there now, but technology's moving forward. We should be okay. Got a thing positive all the time. Like a year after. A year after. Yeah, that's week of the day. Danny, whose partner was shot in Afghanistan, now knows that he's changed his mind and is going back to the war after all. It's really hit home that that he's going in. I think at this stage, it's, he's going, and I know there's nothing I can say that will change that. And it's not the fact that, you know, he doesn't care, he doesn't, you know, he does care deeply, hey, but hey, he knows this is what he's, he has to do, and I wouldn't, I wouldn't stop him from doing it, because I know he wouldn't be happy. Soon after, the Fusiliers are back on the streets, blisters and all, marching ever closer to the day they leave for the front lines. Sergeant Redpath knows there's a chance not all of these men might make it home again. And it gives him pause to think of the two daughters he'll be leaving behind. Uh, they hope that, you know, that I'll, I'll come back OK, then I'll be safe. Um, they haven't voiced any worries to me, but probably in their minds, they'll probably just think, oh, it won't happen to Dad. Dad would be stacking blankets or doing something equally as exciting as that. I think at the same time, every time I say goodbye to my kids, whether it's just me going back to my house or whether I'm going to deploy, I always tell them I love them in case it's the last time I see them. <laughs> 